Your call is connected. Who's it? Hey there. Hello? Who is it? Hi, ma'am. This is the Pointless Audio Stupid Dick Award Squad, and uh, we're just calling around trying to find people stupid enough to actually accept a collect call from someone they don't know. Excuse me? Well, ma'am, I, it's uh, very simple. I looked under the utter dipshit section of the phone book, picked out your phone number, gave it a ring, hoping that you'd be as stupid as they say, and accept a call from someone who you don't even know. No, you have the wrong number. No, this is the right number. I just wanted to call up someone who was a dipshit. Collect? Well, yeah, I mean, apparently you're a bigger dumbass than we thought. Yes, this is collect, and yes, you're paying for it. So basically what I did is scratched my nuts, picked out a phone book, looked in the dipshit section, picked your name, Called your number collect, and look, lo and behold, uh, your ass is paying for me to insult you. So hey, it worked. What do you want? You know, it's idiots like you that make me very proud to be an American. I just wanted to make you pay for my phone call. You know, in fact, if I were to keep talking to you, people would think this call was fake. I mean, it's not often that you stumble upon a person of your pathetic nature. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is hang up on your sorry ass, and then as soon as I'm done with that, you can get your phone bill and realize... God damn, I'm an idiot. All right, thank you, stupid dick. You stupid dick. It's October 7th, and you're listening to Pointless Audio, because inside of all of us, there's a little bit of a stupid dick. Good old Captain Emmy coming at you this time with a little bit of an old school show. I was listening to some of the older ones, and uh, although I used to sound 40, now I sound like I'm 7, thanks to the uh, hardware issue. I feel that uh, I kind of lost where I was coming from. Grassroots, Pointless Audio, if you will. And that would be basically just coming on here and slandering people and companies that really deserved it. And, uh, you know, lately I just kind of pick a company at random and, and blow the shit out of them. And although it's, sometimes it's funny, other times it's completely uncalled for. But, you know, what the, once again, hell, it's my show, I'll do what I want. So this show's going to be done entirely in one take. All the music, all the little fuzzy sounds, all the cute little editing is going to be done on the fly. So if I screw up, pardon me. But I have a feeling my mad mixing skills that I learned from uh, Tupac himself are going to uh, shine through on this episode. Right before I slapped the record button, I wanted to see who deserves to be made fun of today. And uh, the other day I made a little skit involving MTV. Now, you all know I hate MTV, and I've already said why, yet a lot of people really didn't quite understand why. And so, I'm going to clear this up. You know what? Screw today. Today's not Grassroots Emmy. Today is Let Emmy Explain Day. Hey there, hi there, ho there. You're watching the Top 20 Countdown here on MTV. I'm your host, Pat McCrack, former host of... The answer is A-O-L. Tonight we have a request for the song by the group Everclear. The song is called Father of Mine. Now I have an email here from PimpDogDaddyMaster69666 at AOL.com. He says, Yo, 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 Pat McCrack. Yo, 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 bitch. This song is the shiznit. Please play it. Love, Nate Dog. Well, Nate Dog, here's your song, and we hope you enjoy it on the Top 20 Countdown. <laughs> Yeah, hey, hey, what's up? Yeah, my name's Tito. Yeah, we see. I'm out here. I'm out here representing South Compton. So sick. Yeah, I want to hear the, the Everclear song, man. Father of mine. Shit. Fuck, I never had a father. You know what I'm saying? Shit. And these guys out here, he's fucking like, yo, father of mine. Father of mine. It's really cool that he's out here. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I want to shout this one out to all my bitches back at home. Yo, what's up, Nadine? Yeah! That's all I got. Thank you, MTV. Please play a song, man. Shit! Yeah! And there you have it, Everclear, with Father of Mine, here on the MTV Top 20 Countdown. We'll be back after another 20 minutes of commercials to bring you another 5 seconds of a song. Thanks again, I'm Pat McCrack, and please send all emails to patmccrack at aol.fumerotica.com. Alright, now some people are thinking and saying, 
what the hell, I mean, you, you've lost your touch. That skit wasn't funny. And you know what? It wasn't made to be funny. It was made because that's pretty much how MTV is. They're now for the gripes, okay? You get the top ten countdown. You get some emails written by some AOL user that say nothing more than, please play the song for me. Then maybe sometimes they elaborate, well, oh, please play this song because last time I heard it, I was f***ing this bitch and I really want to f*** her again and I think I should and I need to hear the song in order to get aroused. You know what? No one cares. It's just another waste of time. Then they actually play the song and what do they do? Unless it's an R&B or rap song, they cut five minutes into the song and play whatever that is. If the song's only five minutes long, then they don't even play it. They show you a clip of the video, but that's it. Well, what if they do happen to play a song? Like like with Everclear, they seem to play that song a lot. Sure, you get a 15 seconds of the song at full volume, then it cuts down so you can see the uh, overweight song requester in the bottom right-hand corner talking about why he wants to hear it. Then that goes away, you can actually hear the song again. The screen fills with text on why people want to see it, which is generally because, quote, it's really cool, and that's it. It's back to some Carson Daly faggot that's trying to toss another video your way after another hour of commercials. It is for these reasons, as well as others, that PointlessAudio.com has elected MTV into the left nut sucking Hall of Fame. Bring that shit in! All right, I'm guessing that we've gotten to the point in the show where I need to review a mod or get to some earth-shattering gaming news. And guess what I've got for you this time? Uh, let's see what happened. Um, no, that was that, that wasn't that important. Uh, there. Oh, that uh, a gaming? No, no, no one cares. Yeah. Well, you know what? No. Oh yes, I've got it. I've got it. Shogo demos out. Oh, uh, what people can do. You you know, there's there's really nothing good out. There's no important news to report. Maybe the quake scene's dead. No, that's not dead. It's still kicking, isn't it? Mm -hmm. No, Avald will say it's dead just because they like saying people die when they don't. But they're not dead yet. No. Um. Shit. Yeah, sir, do you have a, a young man, a, a child? No. Oh. No, you don't. I'm sorry, uh, we had, this is John McNeely from uh, Lucky Superstore Security. Uh -huh. And we had a young man in here that gave us uh, this phone number, uh, the Harris residence, for uh, his uh, supervisor. Uh, no, no. I, I don't, I don't have, I don't have no, I'm having a children. Okay, well, we had, the young man was in the store today, sir. And uh, he was in the magazine aisle and he whipped out Team Bot magazine. Uh -huh. And a few, we thought he was going to steal it, looking at the surveillance tape. Uh, it turns out he was with there with a bunch of juvenile friends. Uh -huh. And as part of, a part of the dare, after a few minutes of reading the magazine, he actually whipped it out and began to masturbate on aisle six. Yeah. Now, the store does not wish to press charges. However, we were uh, we did want to make you aware of this. I see. Uh, what, do, you, do you remember his name? Uh, sir, I don't have all that information with me. All I know is we had a cleanup on aisle six. Uh, the aisle was very cluttered, and uh -huh. uh, it took about an hour to clean up. And there were some eyewitnesses there, and we do have a surveillance video. No, I don't know him. You don't know him, sir? No. Have you yourself masturbated in a magazine aisle before? Big pardon? Uh, I'm just trying to see. Uh, so you do not know this young man at all? His name was what? what? I'm sorry, sir. He did not give us his name. He refused to talk. Uh, we let the police take care of that. But I, I can't get his name. I wouldn't know whether I know him or not. Okay. Uh, do you have any uh, family members at all there? Any family members that's what? Are there, is there anyone with you right now, sir? No. No, not at all? No. Well, I guess that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't condone masturbating in the magazine aisle, correct? Oh, no. Oh. I don't mean, there's doing no kind of stuff like this. I mean, that's just disgusting, if you ask me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you've done some childhood pranks, though. Mm -hmm. Well, he did that in the store. Oh, yes, sir. He was there. He whipped out Teeny Bot magazine. It had the, the front cover was Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, mm -hmm. From the video surveillance that we have, uh, he apparently took it out, grinned, looked up at the camera, flipped us with the bird, if you know what I mean, uh -huh. and then began to proceed beating his meat. Mm. He must be sick. He must, I, I don't know. I mean, he looked like a pretty healthy young stud, if you know what I mean. Yeah. He apparently did okay. I mean, I guess uh, the guys over in aisle three, uh, mm -hmm. the, the bags of chips were cluttered uh, from him in aisle six. Uh-huh. And that's, that's a pretty good shot. Uh-huh. 
all of our security mirrors were covered. It was disgusting. Mm-hmm. And, and you don't know him? No, I don't know. No, you don't know him? He, he gave you my name? He gave you the Harris residence and this phone number, sir. Uh-huh. That we knew him. I'm sorry? That's what he gave us? That's what he gave us, sir. He said, that's my dad. And uh, he said to call it up, and he said that you actually told him it would be quite all right if he were to uh, wail on himself uh, in the middle of the store. Oh, I never knew. I don't know nothing about that. Are you sure, sir? I mean, we don't wish to press charges. We're just calling for information. Your son is going to be in no trouble. Uh, no, no, I don't. I don't I, uh, you, in other words, you can't give a name. I don't know whether I know him or not. Yeah, he also urinated in the slurping machine. Yeah. And that's uh, that's not a flavor that we like to endorse. Say, I was his dad. I'm sorry? You say he said I was his dad? Yes, sir. He said that you were his biological father and that his real mother didn't care about him because she was a lesbian. What kind of looking guy was he? Um, he was tall. Uh, he was actually about 5'9". Uh, his penis was about 8 inches in size. <laughs> I, I know he's lying. I ain't, I ain't got no children yet. Your children? Oh, not yet? I'm old. I got a daughter in Minnesota and a son in Los Angeles, and that's it. You do have a son in Los Angeles. And he, he, he retired. Okay, so he probably wouldn't be masturbating in our aisle. Oh, yeah. No. Well, it's actually quite a quite an occurrence that you wouldn't uh, expect to see. It happens rather often. No, no, he's lying. I ain't, I don't know. Uh, we had one guy frozen stiff, literally, in the uh, freezer department one day. Mm-hmm. Disgusting. Looked like a adolescent popsicle. Mm-hmm. No, I know nothing about it. You sure you know nothing about him? Do you know if you, any of the neighborhood kids around there if they would be masturbating to uh, Teen Bot magazine? Mm-hmm. No, I wouldn't. Uh, none of your neighbors have children, sir. No, no. All, both everybody on this street is retired. Okay, uh, do you know any retirees that would be masturbating in our aisles? No. Do any of them look young? No. Sir, I, I understand getting it up is hard among retirees. I mean, I can understand, I can sympathize. I mean, I understand that a loss of bladder control is about just as bad as a not being able to have an erection. Yet, the, the bottom line is, we had a major cleanup on aisle six. And that's all I'm trying to say. I mean, we, we've spent lots of money on overtime paying our uh, immigrant janitors, picking it up. And uh, we need to get to the bottom of this. No, yeah, I don't know nothing about it. You don't know nothing about them. Sir, I'm very sorry to disturb you, and uh, you have a pleasant evening. Mm-hmm. Feel free to masturbate in the aisles anytime. Thank you. Who better to uh, wrap the show up in terms of nagging on big companies than uh, Microsoft? And, uh, you know, y- you say their products suck, and yet you, you probably are using them. I'm going to admit, I think they suck, yet I'm using them too. Uh, by choice, no. Uh, what are my options? A Macintosh? <laughs> say hello to iMac? Uh, no. There's Unix, of course. Unix is great. I love Unix, yet it's not going to work with real audio shit. So I'm screwed there. Then you get the Linux, and it's basically Unix, and so I'm still screwed. You know, what else is there? I can always get in a, a Commodore 64 and uh, try and somehow hook up 3D effects, but that ain't going to work. So you say that all their products suck, and you probably wonder why. Well, if you haven't seen the commercial lately, it's got a bunch of little kids sitting around at a computer and a supervisor uh, with a Microsoft shirt sitting behind them. And now you think, oh, great, there's their programming department. But no, it, it's better than that. It's their software development team. And they say... Uh, they never actually specified that the team was for children's software, and that's what I caught so funny, is that they talk about how these children help design and help pick out the bugs and the little things in the games, and I'm thinking, well, maybe that's why my god Explorer crashes so much, because some six-year-old had to go to the potty, and some four-year-old had to take a fucking nap break, some three-year-old needed some animal crackers, my Windows 95 has to crash constantly, so let's make Windows 98 inspired off little kindergartner kids and all suck each other's dicks. Thank you, Microsoft. By the way, that little Microsoft rant was completely uninspired and thought up on the fly. So if you have a problem with that, please feel free to email blackhorse at warzone.com. Thank you. Eh, you know, what the hell. Try a show all in one shot to see how it goes and to save a lot of time. And I guess it went okay. You know, you insert some little music clips, a little skit, and maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe a couple voice effects here and there, and you get a decent show out of it. I don't know, you tell me. Immortal at ECIS.com. I remember when I used to give out my email addresses back, like on my first three shows, and now I dread that. But, you know, what the hell? I still read every single piece of damn email that comes in. Do I reply to half of all of them? No. 
But I still read them, so you should find some comfort in that, I guess. You know, I was thinking about it, and uh, after the little Dave skit from last show, I, I went back and thought, uh, you know, why why is Dave so damn popular? So I prepared a little bit of highlights for you guys, and uh, we'll follow that up by a song of some sorts, and yay, we'll all rejoice and, and have uh, sex. Yeah. There you go. Pointless audio. Thank you for listening. We're going to go up to Dave. He's in the weather studio. Dave, what's the forecast for today, bud? Yo, know, dude, let me tell you something right now, all right? There's these f***ing clouds, right? And they're f***ing round and, and shit. And and it's it's the sky, bro. It's like f***ing blue, man. Bluer than the, the toilet water, bro. That's f***ing blue, man. Shit, man. It's like fucking Godzilla, bro. This huge f***ing monster. And he's like, he's like, roar and shit. And like, all these people, they're like, oh, it's God fucking Zilla. And they're, they're fucking running and shit, and Godzilla's like, roar and fuck, and he's like, shit, man, you're all running, I'm just, I guess I'm gonna have to just beat the fuck out of your town, and he's like, roar, and, and, and people are dead and shit, and it's fucking cool, man. Dude, like, let me tell you, bro, I, I like, took this package, right, and it's got letters on it and shit, it's all like, fucking pop rocks and shit, like, right there on the fucking wrapper. So it's like I opened it up, bro, and I popped some in my mouth. Fucking pippity pop, pop, pop. They're all like fucking going off in my mouth and shit, bro. And I was like, whoa, and shit. And I, and I stabbed the fuckers out. But I was like, oh, shit, fucking pippity pop rocks, bro. Fucking shit, man. Dude, so like I'm there, right? And, and it's in this fucking huge ass theater, right? And all these fucking guys are sitting around just all... They all come out wearing these fucking tight ass fucking tights and shit, man. And they're like, hey, dude, this is river fucking dance and shit. And they start tapping, bro. Fucking tippity tap, to tap, tap, tippity tap and shit, bro. I was like, fucking, whoa. And this guy comes out playing the violin, fucking making weird shit noise and stuff, dude. And fucking, they kept tapping and, and tippity tapping and shit, man. It was fucking weird. Dude, alright, so like I'm there, right? Fucking these guys walk out on stage and shit. They're fucking like, yeah, man, we're handsome, bro. And like all the fucking girls, man, shit, they were like, oh yeah, fucking it's handsome. I was like, fuck, dude, all these chicks are fucking flat, man. They were, bro. So, uh, so I, they're all fucking picking up their guitars and shit. And they're like, fucking, um, ba, do the dot, ba. Ba-doo-ba-doo and shit like that, man. I was fucking, oh, fucking this spot, man. What the hell? But, dude, like, in the end, I was just really fucking pissed because all these girls were so flat. Dude. All right, so, like, I'm in this chat room, right? Fucking this girl comes in, dude, and she's all, Hi, I'm from Florida, and I have big tits. Would you like to fuck me? And I was like, whoa, bro. How the fuck am I going to get to Florida? But she was all, no, man, you can fuck me over the chat room. And I said, all right, and shit. So fucking, like, this little window pops up, right? And she's all, oh, fuck me harder. And so I I didn't know what the hell to do, bro. So I started pounding the keys hella hard. I was like, biggity pound on the keyboard. And she was like, what the hell does that mean and shit? I, I don't know. Fucking, it was weird, man. Dude, like, tonight. Fucking, it's like clear and shit, man. It's so clear, like, fucking, you could hear a pin drop and shit, bro. Now that's fucking clear, man. Dude, if you like surfing, bro, the coast, man, fucking waves like, biggity bam, and they hit you in the head and shit. That's fucking cool. But, like, if you're in Kansas right now, man, surfing is not good. Dude, so, like, I'm watching this show, right? Fucking, there's this girl on stage, man, and she's like, Oh, fucking, I'm really a guy. And shit, man. I was like, whoa, dude. And then, like, he's all, oh, well, hold on, man. There's more and shit. And then, fucking, this guy walks out. And he's like, that's my bitch and shit. And then she was like, you motherfucker. And then, like, all of a sudden, like, he slapped her and she kicked him. And everybody was fucking fighting. And this guy runs on stage, man, and he breaks it up. That was fucking beautiful, man. And then I thought it was all over, you know. And then, fucking, this girl comes out and she's like, this is my bitch, ho. Fuck that shit. And I was just like, whoa, man, this is fucking amazing, dude. And shit, that wasn't even the end of that, man. 
fucking like five minutes later, they bring out this guy who's really a chick from a former life or some shit like that, and fucking he's like, whoa, oh, that's my girl, man. Fuck that shit, man. It was fucking weird. Dudes are like, I'm there, right? And I was like walking around and shit, man, and fucking I walked into this one room, and there was like all these like way small kids, bro, fucking like they didn't even come up to my knees, man. And they were like, Hey, mister, do you want a fucking finger pain and shit? I was like, dude, get the fuck away from me, man. You're scaring me. It was like all around me were these bright fucking colors and shit. And there was, there was like pictures of people on the wall, man. But they were really fucking stupid looking people. And then and then the, this lady comes out, dude. She's like, fucking, oh, it's time to eat your fucking cookies and take a nap and shit. And I was like, where the fuck am I, dude? And, and she said, Oh, sir, please don't use that language here and shit like that. And I was like, What the fuck, dude? Where the hell am I, bro? And she was like, This is kindergarten and shit. And I was like, What the fuck is kindergarten? And then she like said, Oh, you're supposed to be in that special class. That's across the street. I don't know what she was talking about, bro, but that's all I remember from my first day of school. It fucking sucked. Dude, so, like, it's the president, bro, like, of America and shit. Fucking, he's on TV, bro, like, Channel 2, and he's all, he's all, uh, uh, I just like, uh, the American people and shit to know, uh, I did not fuck her. A few weeks later, bro, I'm watching the TV again, and he's on, and he's like, uh, 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 okay, I fucked her and shit, but, like, I didn't lie about it. Dude, uh, what the hell, bro? You just said he didn't f*** her and shit, but he's like, he did? That's pretty f***ed up. <laughs>